hello good evening good evening hello how are you all i hope you've had a good week friday again we get to Friday faster and faster and faster and faster. I don't know if you feel the same, but good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for tuning in. This is about the 10th, maybe even 12th. I'm not even sure how many we've done of these, but thank you so much for tuning in. This is, of course, Hello, Let's Gab, where every single Friday I get to take over, me, Gabby Roslin, gets to take over the Hello Mag live Instagram feed, which I love doing. And the reason I love doing this, I think the magazine is great. I really do. And I love their hashtag, hello to kindness. It means the world to me. And they've got fantastic people that work on this magazine and bringing it out every week. So it's lovely for me to be a part of it every Friday night, live here at six o'clock. So thank you for tuning in. Now, wonderful people joining me as we have every week. So thank you to everybody over the past few weeks. Got some great people coming up in the next few weeks. But tonight, Fleur East, so much to talk to her about. What a beautiful person and an incredible soul. So we're going to be speaking to Fleur East. Also, Jason Manford, who I've known for years, and I'm delighted that he's going to be on. Uh, he's been doing something very special. He's been a delivery driver. Plus, he's, got, he's doing something that I don't think anybody else has done before. He's going to be telling us about that live on here as well. And of course, as with every single week, we have the queen of the snack attacks herself, the wonderful Melissa Hemsley. So that's what's coming up. Can I just point out, I was sent these. Thank you, hello. You can get these. Now, the, the money goes, these face masks, I'm just going to show you these, right? They say hello on them. You get them in red or in navy. And look, this isn't an advert. This is really real because money goes towards Well Child Charity, okay? So the money goes to the charity. Melissa Odebash designed these and they've got hello on them. So you can just because we, you know, it's a bit difficult when you have to have the mask and we have to wear them when we go on public transport and into stores and things. So I think these are a great idea. So there we go. I thought I'd show them. They didn't ask me to. I wanted to show them. Okay, let's see if Fleur is there, the wonderful Fleur East, who just, I think, is quite extraordinary. I was just watching rap. Wow. Wow. Colorblind is really quite something. If you haven't seen it, She'll obviously be talking about that and um, many other things. Oh, there you both are. Oh, Hi. You two beautiful Hi. people. Yeah. Oh, just good evening, beauties. How are you? Hi. Good, Hi. thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Gosh, there's so much I want to talk to you about. First of all, most importantly, happy anniversary. It's a bit oh, late, but happy you. anniversary. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so you went into a little den. Yes, indeed. I forced you into my den, didn't I? Yes, yeah, I was dragged into something that I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> you really? Oh, come on. You must have seen her making the den. Yeah, I saw, but I didn't know what it was. So I was just, yeah. <laughs> Took it back to childhood. Yeah, I was was just, I was oh, I love that. I love that you did it secretly as well. See, that's yeah. the way to do it. Yeah. So I take, realize, yeah. <laughs> take me back a year ago. Best day ever? Um, it was such a beautiful day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of, um, it was different. It was just chill, like uh, just seeing how they spend it, like, you know, quality time together and just enjoying each other company. It was very, yeah. We nice. had like all our close friends and family. Yeah. We had family travel from all over the world. Um, literally, you had a grandma that had never got on a plane before <laughs> and she traveled for our wedding. I yeah, mean, it, it was, was special. Okay, so how did she find the flight? I mean, that must have <laughs> been... Frightening, but she got there, yeah. <laughs> oh, bless her. And she yeah, loved every minute of your day, I bet. Yeah, it was amazing. It was a special day. One of them you never forgot. No, of course you don't. And and yeah. just, I love those photos and how low you two. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Really, really beautiful. <laughs> um, I think you are remarkable, Fleur. I'm a oh. massive, massive fan. I really am. I I mean, I, I love you for what you do, for what you say. Um, I think I think that you are you should be on television more. Aww. I really do. I really do. You. But you're. I've just watched again your colorblind, uh, amazing rap. Uh, I'm sort of speechless by it, and I think that's what you wanted in a way. Did you? It's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's funny because I posted it actually on my YouTube two years ago. I just I read something about. Um, I think it was a few of Hirsch, actually. It was an extract from her book, Brit-ish. And she was speaking about her mixed race experience growing up. And I read the extract and I just sat on my sofa, this sofa, and I literally wrote it 
in under an hour, I was just like, the, I had so much to say about it. And I posted it and, you know, obviously, you know, in light of the recent conversations, I thought it made sense to post it again. And there were so many people that had a similar upbringing to me that reached out and said, I've related to every single word of that. And thank you for, thank you for posting it. Um, yeah, I just, I just needed to share it. I need to get it out. Well, I think it's, re it's very, very pertinent for, for you to re-release it, as it were, now, because there are so many questions and there are so many people wondering. And, and wonder, you know, that thing, and I love that everyone is saying it's now anti-racist. That's yes. how we should all be. Whatever our colour, we should be anti-racist. And you've been very outspoken, as you should be, as we should all be, as I should mm. be, that everybody of any colour should be. So can I ask you about the past few weeks and, and everything that's happened in the news around, around the world and the demonstrations? How, how do you both feel about what you're witnessing? It's actually interesting because I was saying this week that there's this sense that people speaking out is just now jumping on a bandwagon or it's become a trend to share experiences. And for example, we know in our house and in our community and in our family, these conversations have been going on for yeah. as long as we can remember. This hasn't been a new thing that's just come out of nowhere. It's just that now the door is opened and the floor is now open and we feel more confident to share it on our platforms because now everybody's having the conversation. So it's, it's been positive, isn't it? That everybody's I mean, talking it's, about it's it. It's amazing. It's just a, it was a uncomfortable conversation that needs to be have so a lot of people might think oh this is new but it's not new it's been around and it's you know sometimes it's, it's easy to hide from the truth and and obviously i understand a lot of people because they don't live it so they can't understand it and you can't expect anybody to understand something if they're not in your own shoes so mm. but it's good it's good change is happening um so let's hope for like a better future and you know better tomorrow uh, so things are happening things are moving forward you know it's, it's not um, it's not going to be perfect, but you know, it's, it's about progress step by step. Eventually we're going to get there. We might not see the, the full change ourselves, but maybe our kids or grandchild will be able to see, you know, what, what, uh, the future will look like. So let's, let's just hope for the best and, and, so you, and help each other. So. Do you think that's the thing? I mean, I've, I've witnessed it and I've seen it happen firsthand and it dis it, it disgusts me. I don't. I can't think of a better way to put it. It disgusts me, and I've seen it growing up. I'm London born and bred, and I have seen things happen, and and it seems incredible that now everybody is talking about it. And I understand what you're saying about people bandwagoning, and I can't bear that. They've got, oh, come on, let's take on this next fight. But actually, maybe those people who weren't thinking about it before and didn't realise before, it sort of is great that they're even thinking that they will do, do you know what I mean it's so it's important for that is it there's so many layers to it and I, I think people don't really understand it there's a big history and it's not just about bandwagon whatsoever there's so many layers and so many works to be done it's not uh, racism it's not just one layer there's so much like it's it's, it's racism within racism like, it's just so many layers and it's, it's like a lot of culturalism as well like you know disparity uh, I mean, there's so much to it. Like when you start peeling, is it's just it's crazy. So yeah. <laughs> I think I think yeah, it's just it's just like people have to be more open-minded and listen. I think it's all about listening. It's not listen. just like, okay, cool. It's just like a lot of people think, oh yeah, I've suffered this. And what? It's, it's not about it. It's about listening how people feel, their emotion, where they come from. And once we start stopping to just talk and listen to each other, I think we're gonna get in a better place. But I, I do believe that you know tomorrow will be a better day. So social media has been yeah. amazing though. I mean, I've had so many conversations. It's been, it's been emotionally draining if I'm honest, but I've, I've welcomed all of the conversations and even I've received a lot of hate. I've received a lot of backlash no, about even no. just supporting the movement. And well, um, okay, okay. it's, it's all right of, because it's, it, it's, yeah, exactly. It's part yeah, of it. Yeah. And I've had so many conversations and I've had so many people even thank me for, for just opening up to them and they've now gone away and they're doing their own research and, and making their own progress. And, you know, if I can affect change, even just one person at a time, you know, it all, it all helps the cause. Yeah. I know you're saying it's okay for the hate, but quite frankly, I, I, I don't think there's any place for hate. So I hope you just continue to get uh, support and love because that's what you should get. And everybody, everybody, everybody should yeah. get. And that's why I love doing this with Hello, because it's all about, Hashtag hello to kindness. And that is the 
uh, that's the over overriding thing that's the underriding all of it oh there goes your phone somebody's going i can't believe you just said that um so can i just ask you about something that you said uh you've uh, the press picked up on it but something you said on lorraine about you were asked to straighten your hair to, uh, never that you just are beautiful <laughs> what's this who's what happened Did that it's happen interesting because the reactions about that are just I mean, it's phenomenal, the reactions to that. People are saying, well, how is that racist if someone says to straighten your hair? Yeah, and it's like, it don't, don't get me wrong. Yes, okay, someone could say, oh, would you like to straighten your hair? Could you dye it a different color? We understand that there's aesthetics, there's style, there's expression, I understand that. But in my particular experience, and I can only speak from my experience, I was specifically told that my natural Afro hair texture was not marketable and would not sell. And in order to be appealing, I would have to straighten my hair. So that was my personal experience. And that's what I can speak to. And yes, it was an ignorant individual. And God knows where their intentions were. And I realized that not everybody had shares those same opinions. But that was my experience. And unfortunately, there are people that have shared that similar experience. And, it, and it's such a shame. It's a shame. But that's why I'm now so adamant about wearing my hair and wearing my afro proudly because... I know that there's younger girls who have similar hair to me and I was also in the in that position look, looking for someone who had the same hair as me in the limelight and someone that I could relate to and, and that's why I think representation and diversity is so important across so many fields. You need to see someone that, that looks like you and someone that's a positive example. Well, I hope that ignorant person is looking at you now and just going, I got it so wrong <laughs> because, <laughs> oh, did they get it wrong? Um, so can I, can I talk to you about uh, being in the jungle? Mm. Because I, I mean, I loved you when you were singing, but there was something quite extraordinary about you being in the jungle. I literally fell in love with you. I, oh. I mean, in the nicest <laughs> possible way. But you were just brilliant. Did you, did you have any idea before you went in how you were going to be and how you were going to act? And No, I was, I was terrified, wasn't I? <laughs> I remember I was at home going, I don't know if I can do this. Um, because like you say, on The X Factor, I was singing and I was doing something that I know to do, something that I'm really passionate I'm about. brilliant at. Thank you. And then going into the jungle, it was like, oh no, I'm just gonna have to just be myself on a day-to-day -day basis, that's scary. Um, so I didn't really overthink it. I was more worried about the hunger side of things and being able to survive without food and having cold showers every day, that, that element of it really terrified me more so than, than anything else, I think. <laughs> but it was amazing. So did it, ch I mean, I ask it, lots of people that have been on this over the weeks have been in the jungle or have been on Strictly or X Factor, you've done too. Uh, but um, did it change your life? Oh my gosh, in so many ways. Because it went from, I guess, meeting people on the street saying, oh, wow, I loved you on The X Factor, you were great, um, or I loved your music, or I bought this song. And then it went to, Fleur, I feel like I know you. You were, you were so funny, or like comments about me as a person. So I felt like people connected with me in a different way, on a different level, and it's opened up so many more doors for me. Like I've gone into so many different industries um, through that experience. So yeah, I'm really grateful that I did it. So how is it for you watching her doing that and suddenly everybody seeing that side of her how nervous were you and and did I you mean, enjoy the ride as well it was fun like nervous not because i just knew she would go and be herself and that she's just a very positive and you know like high energy and i mean so either you hate or love her so it's one of them things you know only yeah it's just i, I wasn't nervous really i was just more like yeah like when she's coming back <laughs> more than anything else you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah four yeah. weeks without four each weeks, other yeah, without talking every day that was i guess the part but i wasn't really nervous i was like you know what i said to her you just go there experience it take it each day at a time just be yourself it's just an experience of a lifetime it's one of them things so it's just yeah you gotta live it you know what i mean so as, just, yeah, as, as long as long as she's happy she's doing what she love and just it's so good that's that's the way we should, we should always be, as long as you're happy and enjoy it. That's it, man. Um, so, so obviously yeah. Saturday Night Takeaway then came off the back of that. Mm. And uh, more TV presenting, is that going to happen? Because it seems absolutely the right place for you to be. I hope so. I really do hope so. I mean, I, st I studied journalism at uni. Yeah. Um, and my mum was hilarious. The minute I started doing TV presenting, she was like, yes, you're doing your degree. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was so happy. Finally. Oh, finally, yeah, finally you do your degree. So it's always been something that I've been quite passionate about, actually, and I really enjoy it. I love the thrill of it. I love the thrill of live TV, of being thrown into those situations, of meeting people. You know, I, I just love it. The more that I can embrace and take on, the better. I, I very rarely say no to things. Because I think you've, you only live once and anything that I enjoy and I can turn my hand at, I will do. Yeah, it's true. That is such a lovely way to be. And you, do you, have you always been like that? Were you like that as a child? I was, well, I was very shy as a kid, actually. I sort of had like these secret, secret talents and I would like sing alone in my room and I'd, you know, act in front of the mirror and I'd do all these different things and no one would know. And it was my parents that got it out of me and would force me to sing in front of the family. And even you, even my husband, like he'll tell you before the X Factor, he was like, go on the X Factor, what are you waiting for? And I was always like, no, you know, I'm, I'm too worried about that. You don't know how it's gonna go. And he's always been my champion. and. Everyone in, in my life, my close circle, have always spurred me on and encouraged me to get out there. So, yeah, I haven't always been this way, but now I've learned to embrace things and I've enjoyed it. I just, I think, why not? It's just a process, yeah. I think, you know, in life, everybody needs that, you know, that one person to believe in more than you believe in yourself. Yeah, do you know that's it's so important? Yeah. I was talking to somebody else this week about how important it is for, for someone, even if you just have one person, whether it's a teacher yeah. or a parent or a friend, who just believes that you can do it. And that when you say, I have a dream, you know, for other people, because there'll be other young girls out there and guys out there who, who want to sing, who want to be a TV presenter, who, whatever it is, and it, they might be very shy. I was painfully shy, I still am sometimes. And, and people say, you know, how do you get past that? So for all of those people, what, what advice would you give them, Fleur? You've got to stay focused on what you want to achieve. And there will be a lot of negativity and there will be a lot of cynics that will try and derail you and tell you it's not possible. But just look up to all the people that have done it. Look at the people that have paved the way. Nine times out of 10, a lot of those people have faced rejection and they've had a lot of negativity and a lot of knockbacks and they've tried and tried and tried again and they've got there. So you have to be tenacious. You have to be persistent, determined and just know that if you continue to work hard, you'll get there. And you need to draw from motivation from people like this. He's amazing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can all have you in our lives, I think, quite yeah. frankly. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, Fleur, yeah. as well, I'm very sorry about, you know, the beginning of lockdown for you. It was a desperately sad time for you, losing your father. And I send you so much love and my thoughts are with mm -hmm. you on that. Um, so getting through the past few weeks, is it just the two of you have, maybe got even closer to get through. It's been a very tough time because of lockdown, because of personal heartbreak. Do you think that just being together has really helped you? Oh yeah, immensely. I remember literally when we got the news that my dad had passed away, it was, I think a week before I was releasing my album. And I was like, I can't, I can't even think about releasing anything. I just don't know what to do. I'm just, I was so empty. And if it wasn't for Marcel, to be honest, he, he made sure that everything was getting posted. He made sure that my team was getting communicated with. He made sure all the promo was getting out there. I was just, I wasn't myself at all. I was in a really dark place. And I think if it wasn't for Marcel's encouragement, if it wasn't for my family coming together and encouraging each other, then I don't think we would have been able to get through it. And in some ways, lockdown has heightened those emotions and made it harder. Yeah. But in other ways, it's actually helped because we haven't had to go out and face the world while actually going through that suffering and that pain. So it's been a healer mm. in, in many ways as well. You, you're it's extraordinary. I, I mean, I do think that you're, there's somebody on the phone again. Um, <laughs> I do think that you could you could answer it. That'd be really funny. Go, hey, I'm just in. A <laughs> hey, I'm just an interview. I, I, keep, I keep telling but... you, man. I put a funny silence. I don't know if it's somehow they managed to get through. <laughs> it. I don't know. I, don't I know. just wish for you, for both of you. You're a fantastic couple, and I, as I said, I love what you did in Hello. But I just wish for both of you. I just I want so much to come your way because you deserve it, and not only because you deserve it because you're a good person, but you are a massive talent. You really, really are. And I hope you remember that and you carry that with you. And that whatever happens next, it will only be good things. I really mean it. 
Thank you, man. Thank you. That's really work. lovely. Yeah, thank you very much. No, bless you. I love you. I love and, your energy. Oh, <laughs> good energy. I'm a little bit mad. But you are wonderful, both of you. Lovely to talk to you, and I hope to see you yeah, in real no life problem, very man. soon. Take care, man. Yeah. Thank, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye. Oh, what a completely lovely, lovely couple they are. How kind, how sweet, and she is a joy. She's something very unique and very special. And uh, we'll be hearing a lot more of her. Let's see if Jason Manford is there. Jason, are you there? Mr. Manford, come on in. Jason Manford, come on in. Jason, we saw you singing. I knew you could sing. And now everybody knows you can sing. There he is, waiting for Jason Manford, and he's coming on in. Hello, Jason. Hiya. Hello. Oh, How's it going? How are you? I'm shouting like a grandma. How's it going? Are you okay? I, we all do that. It's going, you can are. You you what? Can you hear me? Um, <laughs> what a time you've had. I mean, you've been a delivery driver. It's all come out that you're a delivery driver for Iceland. Well, I, I, I think there was a, a slight poetic license from the press there, to be fair. Um, I did one day and uh, it was for, um, I, I'd sort of I'd tweeted early on in the, in the lockdown that I'd applied to a few jobs. I'd been rejected uh, by a few, for a few jobs. And then uh, Iceland said, "Look, why don't you come and uh, why don't you come and do a shift for us, and we'll make a donation to a charity of your choice." So they made a lovely uh, donation to uh, the Children's Adventure Farm Trust, which is a uh, is really lovely charity near, near me up in Manchester. Um, we delivered a load of food to a um, to a, 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 a it's called the Bread and Butter thing, which is like a, a you know. A, food trust and giving out food to people who need it and so it was just a lovely thing to it was just really lovely to do you know because during the whole process of lockdown you um you realize how far down the pecking order uh you know uh, comedians are <laughs> you know well all, all sort of entertainers to a certain degree i was sort of looking at the website like comedian comedian no nope, we're not a key worker um yeah. so it was lovely just to sort of feel a bit useful really Actually, the news this week, I suppose, two days ago from Cameron McIntosh. I mean, musical and people, we will talk about about the Mars Singer, of course. That's what people are wanting to talk about. <laughs> but, but um, I mean, it's, it's really tragic news about everybody that you and I, we know so many people in the industry. You are, you're a theatre man as well. Yeah. What on earth has happened to the entertainment industry? Well, I mean, I was in the middle of a show. Uh, when, uh, which was pulled, you know, we still had five weeks to go and it was pulled on a on a Tuesday, you know. Um, so that was that was pretty hard, you know, to suddenly go from that, you know, peak to uh, heading uh, heading back home and stuff. But, and, and, and it has been hard. And, and I must say, there's a lot of us who do feel uh, a bit forgotten, you know, yeah. when it comes to the government and, and what they've done for various industries it does seem you know more people go to watch theatre than go to watch football yet football is back on the telly and they've done everything they can in their power to get football back um and yet more money and, and more people uh, are spent and, and go to watch the theatre so you know that's one way to look at it and and i think also it's hard because i think there's a perception sometimes from the press from from society uh that People, la di da, theatre people, uh, uh, getting paid loads of money and yeah. uh, you know uh, and whatnot. And actually, look, don't get me wrong, I ain't ple pleading poverty, and I got paid very handsomely. But you know, that's I'm the guy on the poster for for a big show like that. There's 25 other people in the in the cast. There's 25 people in the crew. There's people selling ice creams. There's people working in the offices. There's you know 200 people behind every show. Uh, who are now out of work and, and, and with no idea of when they're going to get back in. I know, to, it's, to the it's horrific. And there's a lot of all the technical people, all the, you know, the yeah. people who do the costumes. I mean, there's so many layers, but also so, so many. many of our friends, uh, mutual friends of ours, who just don't know when they're next going to earn another penny. And it's, no. and they're in, they're in a dreadful way. I know there's, a, a you know, all the T-shirts, you know, the show must go on and mm. charity money. Money's going to that charity. Yeah, but yeah. that the industry is—it's so sad to see it like that. It really. Well, also is. because it means it means so much to so many people. That's what like, you know. We're not bankers. You know what I mean. This is not an industry where we're aloof and, and separate and, and and looking down our noses. These are people who, um, you know, who spend their lives 
just wanting to make other people enriching other people's lives whether it's making them laugh making them feel making them cry whatever it is so it's the it's some of the most sensitive people in our uh, our society you know who are who are struggling what i will say though from what i've looked at and what i've read and who i've um, people i've spoke to I, you know i i think cameron mackintosh is preemptive i think by saying we're not gonna be back till next year i think he's done a slight disservice to to the industry i'm hoping what he's done is said it to make an impact to give everybody a oh my god we never even thought about that and i hope that that's why he's done it because I think we'll be back this year. Uh, you know, looking at the trends and things that are being opened here and there, and you know, we're all trying different things. I've got some gigs that are driving. I know gigs. we're going to talk about um, driving. you know streaming. All these different things are going on. I think we'll be back this year. I, I, you know, it might be different. It might not be what you remember. You might be sat, you know, two meters away from somebody or whatever. But I just think, you know, the the you know the, the theater in this country, the West End in this country, you know, let alone the thousands of theatres across the the country they're just the they're the center of some communities they're the lifeblood of people's yeah. uh, I, you know idea of a night out and you know i know someone mentioned i think sam mendes mentioned it recently you know the the, the irony of the, the the stocks and shares of netflix and amazon prime and uh you know bbc iplay and all these all these things have gone up using actors and performers yeah, yeah who have all trained in, in the theatre, which has been left on its ass. So, you know, hopefully uh, this, the, 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 the next... What I've heard is that over the next 10 days, two weeks, there is a new... Uh, you know, that Boris and that are, fo are focusing on the on the theatre and entertainment industry. Um, and there's going to... You know, in the next two weeks, there'll be news and, and a package, you know, to, to help a lot of people out. So... I hope so. Yeah. I really hope so. Uh, you are phenomenal in the theatre. I think you surprised a lot of people, obviously, when you went on Masked Singer. I saw, <laughs> I'd seen you in, in shows, so yeah. I knew you could sing. Um, and you can, you, you can dance and you can move and you can, you're funny and you're nice. My goodness, <laughs> is there nothing that we can't take? But, you, wow, did you surprise people. Did you love doing that, the Masked Singer? Yeah, I did. I must say, I really did. I really did love doing it. And I, and I sort of... I still miss the hedgehog now, like I sort of really, I really yeah, I sort of like became, you know, you be, because it becomes like um, a, a more extrovert version of of yourself, like because you're in a mask and because you're in that costume, you can basically, you know, sing and dance and move, how you, you know, you like you never would, you know, you never, you never, you, I would never think about doing that if it was just me. Um, there's an element in this country. I mean, Fleur was just mentioning it then a little bit. There's, an, there's a sort of mindset sometimes in this country which is sort of stay in your lane. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a, you know, and that's not just entertainment. That's in every industry. People, fit, you know, I know people 35, 40, you've got the job, they've got the career, and if they decided to go and do something, you know, ridiculously different, they know there'd be friends and family who might say, oh, you know, is that not a bit of a risk? You know, should you not do that? You know, so to to be able to do a show where, you were literally sort of judged on your singing and uh, and no there was no pre uh, pre thoughts there was no people were thinking well, he shouldn't be doing that uh, who is this guy you know uh, it was just exciting and and I loved it absolutely loved it did your family know that you were doing it or because I know some people kept it you they didn't know no I mean I told my wife you know she'd have asked me where I was going yeah but um, <laughs> uh, no I didn't tell anybody and I didn't tell um, I didn't tell the children which was uh, and they loved the show. So we watched the show every week. So we recorded it in the September and it went out, you know, January. And, uh, and my kids didn't know either. And she, my, my middle daughter was actually at a friend's. She was at a sleepover on the night of the final. And all her friends were saying, that's your daddy. And she was going, I think I, think I would know if that was my dad. Like, he would have told me. And then, uh, so when the, when the mask came off, she was livid. Oh, bless her! <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I looked an idiot in front of my friends. <laughs> oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> yeah, so, it was great. Yeah, has that, uh, you know, I just said to Fleur about I'm a celebrity. She said it did change her life. Has that changed the way people perceive you, do you think? Um, I don't think so. I mean, maybe, maybe there's some people who didn't know that I could sing and uh, who now do, but you know, I've, sometimes, I get messages sometimes and they say, after they've heard me sing a song, they'll say, where, where have you been hiding that? 
And I think on the West End stage and <laughs> on an album, like I don't know how much more, how much more I could have done, you know. Um, yeah, we uh, we were there was talks of doing another album off the back of Mass Singer, and then and then all this happened, and obviously everything's gone to. Oh, you've got to do uh, another gone, album. Gone to pot. So no, I'd like to. I'd like to. I've got a few ideas of something, and it's it's a lot of fun, I must say. And um, I will tell you a funny story actually. So I, I um in the build up to the final. I was getting lots of tweets about it, and and some people were saying, "Oh, is it Michael Ball? Is it Alfie Bow? Is it Michael Crawford? Is it you know all these amazing you know musical theatre legends, you know singing legends?" And I rang Alfie's a, one of my best friends, and I, I rang Alfie one one afternoon on on, on, a, on a drive out, and I said, "Have you been watching this Mass Singer?" He says, "No, I've not seen any of it." He said, "But I tell you, what I'm getting sick of every every single." Uh, Saturday night, I'm inundated with tweets telling me <laughs> that I'm the hedgehog. He said, so I, so I watched it. I watched it this week, and I watched the hedgehog sing, singing, and I thought to myself, I'm not that rubbish at singing, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was sort of on the phone like, well, you know, maybe maybe the, the, the spikes are really heavy and he can't breathe properly in his mask. <laughs> and uh, when the final happened, and it, I... Um, it was unveiled that it was me. I just got a very sheepish text message saying, oh, I, I think I probably need to apologise. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. But yes, yeah, so, okay, so along with the singing, yeah, I mean, you've been doing quizzes throughout lockdown. Yeah. Keeping yeah. everybody very amused. But also now you're doing a drive-in show. Doing loads, yeah. Sort of trying to get busy again, which has been great. So what is a the... drive-in show? How's that going to work? <sighs> You, you, your guess is as good as mine. I, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be like uh, we're going to be like Chachi and Ralph Malfi in Happy Days. Yes, um, that's the only sort of reference point I've got, really. Yeah, I mean, by all accounts, they've booked a big, you know, a, a big space, a massive car park, or I don't know where it is. Uh, set up the the stage and the lights and the, and, the, and the sound. And it's a big concert, like all day. There's stuff in the day for the kids, and there's stuff later on. And you drive in, you get your pitch, and your pitch is, you know, uh, socially distant from the next pitch along. So you're able to get out your car. Oh, you can get out of the car. Yeah, you can get out your car. You can have a sit on some chairs. You know, bring a couple of chairs with you. Uh, the one in Dagenham and uh, you just uh, read Brent... that I did too. Dagenham, where yeah. are going? Says Dagenham Kaz and Brent Cross. I just thanks for reminding me there. Uh, Kaz Clean, um, and and yeah, it, it, I just you know I snapped the hand off to be honest because you know we, I, we've all got bills to pay, yeah. and I said all right. I know a lot of comics are going no, I, I, I need the sound of laughter and stuff like that. And I thought yeah, it's been it's lovely having laughter, but I've definitely done enough gigs where I didn't get any. To... <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> early, on, believe early on, you. early on, early um, on. <laughs> but um, but no, it looks like it'll be fun, I think. And also, again, you know, the guy rang me, um, Brett Vincent, who's one of the organisers, and he said, oh, thanks for doing this gig, Jace. It's great. I said, no, I'm really pleased. He said, I can't tell you how many people are employed because you put your name down on that poster. Oh, wow. And you sort of go, crikey, just, you know, you don't always think like that. You know, you don't think... God, there's suddenly 60 people have got a job, you know, because you've said yeah to a gig. Like, that's it's amazing, really. So, it's worth it. And I don't know how people are, are going to flash the lights or window wipers when they're laughing. I don't know. I don't well, know. surely they can lean out of the windows and clap. I think so. And they've got, they can tune in the radio to uh, to the right frequency so they can hear hear the gig. So oh, that is brilliant. Yeah. Look, so people are saying can't wait. Book thirty three right. minutes after the tickets. Oh, off. great. Well, no, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it, and and it's nice really because I have I have tried to keep myself busy during lockdown. I do a quiz. In fact, in an hour and a half, we do one on yeah, uh, on my Friday YouTube nights. channel. So we do games arcade at eight o'clock every Friday, and I've been doing a kids one on a Wednesday for kids who have been you know either at school or, or homeschooling, and. Uh, you know, and that's all just, you know, I just put it together and it's all for free and I just get people to call on. And we've had, that, you know, 20 odd thousand people coming to watch uh, these quizzes. And, and and I think, I mean, for me, that's how I feel about this job, which is, you know, this job is, that I do is an absolute privilege. Like it's a privilege to do. And that is whether you're getting paid that week or not getting paid that week. Like it's still your job. And so for me... You know, there's been times where 
you know, I remember times where I was like, I need this gig because if I don't do this gig this weekend, I haven't got enough money to pay the rent or the, or the bills or whatever it is, you know, the, the following week. And people come to the gigs and they came, especially in my first tours, you know, there was 40, 50 people in a room that was supposed to hold, hold uh, you know, a thousand. And I just got through it and I got through it and we gradually got to a point where we were selling out the big venues. And so I just feel in a way by just giving people a focal point and a place to come together on a Friday night on YouTube or, or wherever, that that's me just sort of saying, look, here, have something back. You know what I mean? Have this and, 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 we'll, and we'll keep you, keep you going. You know, there's something about the, the business that we're in. That I, I mean, I, I love being a TV presenter. So to be able to do this on Friday nights, yeah. here I am in my bedroom doing this. But for me, it's, and I love it because then you can bring people into people's homes. And I think yeah. that's what we're all trying to find something to do through these strange times. But you are about making people happy. You've always been like that. I've known you a long time. And every time I've interviewed you, every time I've seen you, you just want people to be happy that seems to be your thing whether yeah. it's you singing or dancing or or acting or comedian it's or presenting or doing that hysterical game show you did i think i texted you oh, on first and last yeah you did yeah no no, no but the other <laughs> one, one the one where people oh. had with the big heads oh big heads with... yeah big heads oh, that was a lot of fun that one <laughs> i honestly would i'd need the loose right I'd oh love... it was very funny yeah it was a lot so of fun hard yeah oh, my word but you yeah. just want to make people happy, don't you? Of course, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's the mad thing about doing stand-up, which which can be forgotten sometimes when you're seeing somebody, uh, you know, at an arena or, you know, on their Saturday night TV show or something, is that every single comedian who you uh, uh, love on the telly or who you, if you watch over the years, not one of us started it with a business plan. Not <laughs> one of us started it because we thought, <laughs> I could make some money here. Yeah. Not one of us did that. We all started it because we made our mates laugh and one of them said, you should get up and do 10 minutes. Like, or you watch some comedy and thought, I might have a go at that and write some jokes. Like, we all started this hobby. And so, for some of us, astronomically lucky, some of us, it's become a job. And, and, and so that's what I love about comedy is that it's a meritocracy. You know, the people who rise to the top are are the best at it, you know, and, uh, but that's not to say that there isn't hundreds, thousands of other comedians who you've not heard of, who are out there playing, uh, you know, playing their trade. Uh, and a another thing I've set up actually is for, is starting on Thursday night, we're doing uh, a streaming, uh, on, again, on YouTube, um, comedy night. So it's going to start next Thursday. We're, we're doing it. We're going to run it for eight weeks and it's dead affordable. It's like four quid, you know, not even per person, just household, you know. Um, and we've got a front row. So we've got people on Zoom who are like our front row so we can hear a bit of laughter. And we've just got some top comics. You know, we've got Rob Brydon's doing one, John Bishop's doing one, Russell Howard, Harry Hill. I've got some comics from all over the world, from Cape Town to Brisbane to Bali to, you know, to New York, uh, as well as the best of the UK scene as well. And just looking forward to get, you know, getting into it and starting some yeah. comedy again and, and, and just making people laugh, getting people back to, you know, to, to remembering what they, what they found funny, you know. And, you know, recently there's been a lot of, you know, with political movements and obviously the Black Lives Matter and, uh, you know, obviously the, the virus and all these, th all these very, very serious issues and they are serious and they absolutely have to be taken uh, seriously. And you, you have to get on board. You have to do something about these things. But at the same time, what's massively important is you don't forget how to laugh at yourselves, at others. You know, it's, it, it's, the, it's what makes us human beings. We're the only animal that laughs. I, I presume I, I'm not uh, David Attenborough, but we're the only ones who make each other laugh, and and and, and I'd, I'd love that about us. I love that we can do that. I think you are a joy. You know, I always say that every time I see you, I really do. And what I love about Fleur and and Marcel, but and they you, great. is yeah, you're they very lovely. real. And there are and our industry is a very strange thing. And I'd say on the whole, everybody is really damn lovely. But there's. A handful of people are so real, and you're one of them. You really are. And may you just continue to make us all laugh, because it's what we all need. We really, really need it.
you've got to laugh. You've got to laugh. You've got to, you know, it, as I said, I did my show on, uh, I gave my show to the BBC recently. I just said, look, have it, put it on the telly. I don't want, I don't even want paying for it. Just let's make people laugh. And they put it on last Friday. And I got so many lovely messages. And I, I mentioned about the mental health aspect of laughter. You know, it releases endorphins. It thins the blood. It reduces, cal you know, you, you burn calories from laughing. And the mad thing is, I don't know if you know this, even faking laughing. Here, let's try it now, right? Me oh, I you. do all the time. I, 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 first thing in the morning, if yeah. I'm feeling a bit down, I just go... <laughs> 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 try, if you're watching now, just give it... <laughs> It releases the same endorphins as a real laugh. It's madness. It's magic. It's 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 the, one of the best medicines. I agree. As you are, I ah. adore you. Uh, thank you, my lovely friend Jason. Pleasure. And I will be speaking to you on Sunday on the radio. I'll see you Sunday. Yeah. Twice <laughs> right, in darling. two days. Take care, my lovely. Bye, bye. Bye. Oh, he's just. You see, just lovely 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 what an amazing group of people on the show i love doing this show so much it's my dream show <laughs> i'm in my bedroom um right uh let's find melissa now everyone's doing their fake laughing which i love hopefully they're joining in i know that melissa and henry will be joining in and they'll be laughing wherever they are in their kitchen i hope uh hello come on in melissa come on in come on in hello lovely Hi Gabby, hi everybody, hello, how are you, you okay? Oh, it's so lovely to see you. Uh, how, Fleur and Marcel and Jason, just, and now you, I mean, please, this is just, this is a dream come true. Every week, we have such fun, don't we? We have such fun. Gabby, I keep thinking this, and then I said, uh, I'm going to say it now, because you've just led us beautifully. We need a compilation video. We need a compilation video or, or everything because it's every Friday and every week we, we text each other we're like, how is it already a week? I've forgotten all the amazing snacks we've made. I've forgotten all the times I've laughed from your other guests because I love literally having my drink and making my snacks and watching you be amazing. I need oh. to watch it back. Well, you know oh, what? We do that, Rosie Nixon. Yeah, Rosie Nixon is watching and saying hello to you. We love you, Rosie. We, we love, love you, Rosie, you, Rosie Nixon. Giving us the opportunity to make this show. And Christian is watching. Let's get a compilation together. Let's get Very a compilation good. together. Gabby's best yes. bit. So um, and we've got all sorts oh, yeah. of people lined up for the next few weeks as well, which is very fabulous. But now, I love your idea today. Share with every... Look, Rosie says she's on it. Yes. Um, Rosie's on it. Let's, let's find out today what you're going to do, because I love this idea. Okay, so this is a cookbook that I know that Gabby, can you see all right, that Gabby um, uh, knows a bit about and, and supports. I know that Hello have covered it before. It's called the Together Cookbook. Um, it's um, written and uh, the recipe, it's a cookbook, yeah. It's written and the stories told and the recipes are from the amazing Hub Community Kitchen. Apparently Hub means love in Arabic. And it is the women, uh, the mothers and the residents uh, of Grenfell Tower. Uh, and um, I'm sure all of us know that it was the three year anniversary of the Grenfell fire tragedy. Last um, Sunday. Last, yeah. last, last weekend, exactly. And there is so much to say, which, which, which um, we wouldn't be able to cover now. Uh, and but the, apart from but the we, fact that our love and thoughts to the people, and it's still, it's, it's ne may we never forget that something so horrific happened and we all witnessed it, witnessed it as it happened. So our love and thoughts to the family. But this cookbook is phenomenal. Of course, Megan, um, she, uh, we also, uh, we met them because as Rosie just reminded us at the Star Woman Awards uh, last year, they're amazing people. And of course, Megan did the forward of it and she knows these women very well indeed. Yeah, and it's actually a really beautiful forward. And I think... Aside from everything, the recipes are incredible. But the fact that, um, you know, we can support the families 
uh, and the community by by purchasing this book, a portion will goes to community projects and, and to them. And uh, some of them are on Instagram. And I'm gonna when I post the the pictures from today, we can tag them and say hi and support. Lovely. Them. One of them in particular, I have noticed, has got her own catering company now, uh, which I'm sure we can support. I actually had the honour of cooking with Oksana and Hiwot. Uh, about a year and a half ago, who were just two of the ladies, we worked on a, um, a Love Food Hate Waste event. Uh, so anyway, you and I and Rosie, I'm sure we'll do swipe up links so we can all oh, support them. Oh, completely, the completely. Promise I will but, my food. you know, aside from the fact that we're remembering them all today and they're in our thoughts, the recipes are gorgeous. And as we talked about a few weeks ago, and actually just in general, why I love our Friday shows, apart from just being able to see you, is it's a lovely little challenge for me every Friday to come out of my comfort zone and not just make the same old snacks and think about, oh, what different things could I learn and so on. So I've taken inspiration by these wonderful ladies of the Hub Community Kitchen. And I want to shout out two ladies today, uh, Karen Bilal and her spicy peanut dip. Uh, she says it's, it's quite... Yeah, I know. She says it's quite typical for Uganda. She says it's quite spicy. So she was pleased when everybody appreciated that she toned it down a bit. And I'll show it to you now. Um, I actually didn't have any peanut butter. So I've used almond uh, nut butter. Did I lose you for a second? Have, have I got you? Okay. No, no, so, no, no, you're there. Oh, you've stopped. Now you've stopped. That's very weird. Now, oh, now I've got you. No? Gone? Come back, come back, come back, move. Maybe you're gonna to have to go off and come back in again. Are you there? What's happened? This has never happened. This has never happened with Melissa. I know, Henry's fiddling with the camera, isn't he, behind you? Do you know what? We're gonna get your recipe. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna... Kim, okay, this does happen, of course it does. This is Instagram. Uh, Instagram live and sometimes people's feeds go down. So let's get you back in. So Melissa, come back and let me know that you are there. There she is. So Melissa, she will be here any moment and hopefully uh, her, it won't go all, ah, there she is, she's back again. Here we are. Right, Melissa Hemsley, come on back on in because we did leave, we lost you just for a moment. Come on, come on. Also, we must talk about her podcast. Thank you, Christian, for reminding me. Live Life Better, which is uh, Melissa's podcast. Right. Oh, oh, Gabby, sorry. There you are. No, it's yes. fine. There you are. Okay. There are. Sorry about that. So back to the Hub Community Kitchen Together Cookbook. They're amazing recipes. We're all going to support them. This is one of them. It's a spicy peanut dip. I use almond butter because I only had almond butter. And I thought I could buy peanut butter, but I'm all about using what you've got. So you fry onions and garlic and ginger. I know we love ginger. Loads of spices. I'm not going to give you the exact spice mix because, of course, we've got to support them by buying their book. Buy the book. Yes. Um, but you basically, um, it is this luscious brown creamy mix of nut butter. And then I thought, I want to make it cheerful and colourful. So I've got them. So basically, fry the onions, garlic, all the secret spices, tomato puree, water, add the almond butter, thick, creamy almond butter, a good amount of salt. And then I thought, okay, let's add a little bit of colour. Got some fennel fronds from the garden. Got a little bit of coriander on top, all lazed around. And then I did a really fun cook along with my friend, Romy Gill. Romy Gill, MBE, check her out. She's the chef on Ready, Steady, Cook. We used half a pomegranate. I had half a pomegranate left. Henry, you might have to address the um, thing oh, for a second. Can Do you, you call me talk this? I can yes. never get the seeds out. Gabby, it's like we are, I told you before, we're Oh, it's gone still again. I don't believe it's gone still again. Just at that moment. I don't know how to get the seeds out of a pomegranate and I end up tearing it apart. And Melissa's gone still again. Let's try again. Come on, Melissa. Come on, Melissa. See if we can do that. We might have to go off from her again and come back again. I love, it's very funny. The picture of you looks like she's threatening. Bring you back again. This is very funny. This really hasn't happened before. I have to keep watching to see if we get her back again. <laughs> this is very strange. But hey, it's live. And that's why I love live. There is nothing quite as wonderful as live. Let's bring her back in again. Uh, she, hopefully she's not threatening me with a wooden spoon again. That was so funny. That's so funny. Come on in. Gabby, Gabby yes. we're going to go in the living room because maybe it's a problem. Sorry, everyone. No, it's Can fine. you see me, Gabby? Really it's, it's, oh. It was still with you 
threatening me <laughs> with a spoon. Gabby, I, I'm so, if we lose each other again, I'll cry. But before we go, we need to, I need to show you how to spank a pomegranate, Gabby. Yes, how do you do it? Because I get it everywhere. It just spurts everywhere. Okay, so Gabby, I, Henry's disappeared because the doorbell's just gone. My dog's running around. Oh, Henry, if you can show me and Gabby, if you can get that up there. This is what you do. Take your half pomegranate. Yeah. And take a wooden spoon and you just start, excuse my charger, you just start spanking it, Gabby, like that. Thwack. Okay, spanking your pomegranate and whipping your feta. Those are two things that you've told me that I didn't know about before. Oh, it's happened again. It's uh, gone still again. No, up. Melissa. Don't cry. Okay, got your just phone. Said, don't, you just, you just said, oh, there, there, you're back again. You. <coughs> Gabby, I don't know what's going on, but I'm Henry's got his phone as oh, back up. Again. Can you now see? Oh, no, that's the most Melissa. important thing. Can you right. see it? Yes, it's beautiful. It looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, and we've got the static picture of that. You're now going in slow motion. So it's very, very strange. So we've had one of your recipes. I'm hoping, I'm hoping after we've seen your spanking pomegranate that we might get another recipe as well. Melissa, is it? Can you see me, Gabby? Yeah. Gabby, can you yes, see me? Yes, it's in slow motion. I can, oh, my sweet. Have you got your That is so funny. What do you want me to do? You're, you're, you're spanking your phone. Yeah. You're locked in. Okay. Uh, maybe that we'll just try the Wi-Fi one more so time. what are we going to do? Me? What are we going to do? I can, but it... Okay. Can you see so me? I'm pulling you out of your sitting room. Yes, good. <laughs> yes, yes, I can see you. You're still standing. Okay. Gabby? Is this better? There you are. Yes. Oh, I'm so. I don't. We've uh, we never had a problem before, so have we? We've no, never but had you a know what? Before, yeah, have we, Gabby? It's, it's live. No, but it's it live. So in? listen. All right. So the next recipe. Okay. So the next recipe is very simple. It is a ginger tea, which we've talked about ginger tea before, but this is Ugandan one with um, ginger. Cinnamon. It smells like heaven. Ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, uh, what else? Star anise, black pepper. Uh, my glasses are getting steamed up. Um, and you can add a little bit of the sweetener of your choice. So maybe a little bit of raw honey afterwards. And it is totally divine. Uh, I'm just gonna, you can have it as a hot tea. It, it literally will take, what's the expression? Hairs off your chest? Oh, yeah. Is that it? I, I it love right? it. We're talking. Okay, so tonight, Melissa, uh, as Rosie Nixon says, you're a trooper. Um, uh, tonight we've had spanking pomegranates. We've had hairy chess, and a couple of weeks ago we had uh, whipping our feta. And now you've gone still again. Oh my goodness me! You are divine. You're not going to hear this, and we haven't even seen Henry taste test it this week. Melissa, if you can still hear me, thank you. Bless you. I love you. I really, really do. I will see you next Friday what happened but you know what it happens it's live that's what happens but don't forget to get that cookbook and the best advice I can give you is to go over to Melissa Hemley, Hemsley's feed and she'll be giving you those recipes up on her stories and also she'll tell you more about that cookbook as well so thank you very much everybody uh, for watching thank you to Fleur and Marcel and thank you to Jason Manford thank you to Hello Magazine and can I just remind you I wasn't asked to do this I'm doing this because Melissa Odebash designed these for Hello Magazine, okay? So these are your face masks, so there's red and there's navy, and money goes to Well Child Charity. Find out about Well Child Charity, they're amazing. Um, I'm involved with that charity, so that's why I'm mentioning it. Uh, so thank you for watching, we'll be back next Friday here. Thank you, and good night. Bye-bye, everybody, bye-bye.